Turkey, 1853, a mountainous land defined by the Anatolian mountain range, separating it from Russia. A land at peace, but not During the Crimean War, the Russians possessed one of the mightiest and most competent armies in the world. They were able to stand their ground against the industrialized powers of the West due to the sheer size of their army. Around 900,000 soldiers, compared to the Allied forces mere 600,000, which consisted of Britain, France, and Turkey. And so, when you saw a Russian army approaching, you would run the heck out of the way. Indeed. The well-organized Russian forces did pose a serious threat to the Turkish-controlled Balkan region. Especially with my son, Vlad, and my other son, Vlad, and my daughter, Vlad Misha. They were so beautiful until they starved to death. The Russian forces prevailed at the Battle of Sinop against the Turks, who lost nearly their entire naval fleet. Despite fighting in their home territory, the Turks were outnumbered and outgunned, so they were forced to buy for support from Western Europe. After their devastating defeat, the Turks sought help from French and British forces. October 17, 1854, the Russians are garrisoned at Fort Sebastopol, while the Allied forces lay siege. October 25th, 1854, British forces lead a charge on a Russian artillery line. However, due to a miscommunication from the British, their artillery line was much more prepared for the high British casualties. September 9th, 1855. The siege comes to a close. The Russians are forced to retreat out of Fort Sebastopol as Allied forces move in. The Russians soon lose their foothold in the Black Sea. Russians begin to lose nearly every battle in the war has continued, eventually resulting in their eminent defeat. Man, Russia back then suck. They're no good. They lose to Frenchmen! Frenchmen eat baguette! No good! Boo! The Jebou is... Jebou.
The defeat of the Russians prevented the Ottoman Empire from collapsing and kept the balance of power of Europe in check. Without help, the Turks would have surely fallen and Europe would be in chaos. Can I leave now? Yeah, sure. Alright, thanks. Army defeated, Alexander II had no choice but to surrender to the Allied forces on March 30th, 1856, by signing the Treaty of Paris. This stopped Russian expansion into Europe and prevented a power struggle in the Anatolian and Balkan regions. Man, I hate Alexander II! He is weak! Not like strong ruler Putin! He is strong! 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 Instead of taking the loss of the Crimean War as a complete failure, Alexander II took this opportunity to transform Russia into a powerhouse. He began this by freeing the serfs of the land in order to allow them to work on other things for the Russian Empire in 1861. However, even though he freed them, he didn't give them much political rights, and they had to pay hefty taxes for the lands that they received, causing little change in agricultural growth. My intention is to abolish serfdom. You can yourself understand that the present order of owning souls cannot remain unchanged. It is better to abolish serfdom from above than to wait for that time when it starts to abolish itself from below. I ask you to think about the best way to carry this out. Living conditions of the Russian serf were miserable during this era. Serfs were not free to choose who they married and were forced to work mainly on their lord's land instead of working on their own. In a sense, they were treated as a more modern form of slaves. Alexander II freed the serfs, hoping to boost Russia's agriculture and begin the process of industrialization. Although Alexander meant well, serf emancipation did little to aid Russia's development, and many peasants were put into debt. The serfs' emancipation led to other things than their freedom. District assemblies were formed, which were called Zemspos, and all classes sent their representatives. Although the landowners sent many more representatives, these assemblies were subordinate to the Tsars of Russia, but managed the issues in their own districts, like education, medical service, and transportation, and were quite successful in the end. So, the, the, this is for Discovery Channel, right? No, he's for History Channel. What? I'm out of here! Things may have been looking down for Russia, but what's that on the horizon? Oh no.